In this clip I'm going to talk to you about sketches, the variety of types of sketches that I tend to do and how you can generate them. Let me also remind you that if this topic is not of interest to you that you could skip ahead as you can with any of the clips. Please also remember to like, dislike, or leave a comment that might help me in future videos. By definition, a sketch is a rough or unfinished drawing. They can be color or black and white, simple or highly detailed. The sketch also may be used as a starting point for the painter and may show through. I will now demonstrate several techniques. I tend to prefer black and white sketches to highlight architectural detail that I find interesting. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it here. A combination of Photoshop and uh, Topaz Studio 2. This is a cloister. Uh, it's coming in in color. I've already processed the image and uh, kind of hyped it up a bit. I think this was HDR. There were some people standing here that I cloned out. And uh, then what I did was I converted it to black and white. And when you go to convert to black and white, of course, you get sliders. And if I take the yellow slider, especially back to the left, you can see that uh, the stonework, which was kind of on the orange side, is a bit dark for what my intent is, which is to have kind of a simplified but still detailed sketch and then one that's even simpler. So if I take that slider to the right, you see those stones lightening, and that's going to put less sketch detail into these lighter areas and more into the darker. The green I took up simply because there was foliage in the background of this open window area and I wanted to decrease that if I were the blues I have up, but it's really doing very little. Maybe a few rocks in here. Uh, same thing with the cyan. Uh, and all the other colors are, are pretty irrelevant to this one. So then I stamped that layer. So uh, on a PC, Alt, Control, Shift, E, and uh, something like Command, Shift, E, or Command, Control, Shift, E on a Mac. Can't remember. Sorry. Uh, and that gives me the same image, but on one layer, so that we're not dealing with additive layers. It's like starting with a new image. And then I took, I put on an adjustment layer, so both the black and white and the levels I found under this little half moon thing. Uh, you can also do this, and probably advisable to do this, in Topaz Studio, but with curves. By doing that, you'll be able to adjust it up and down to modify your final outcome. But here's the levels that I applied, and you can see a difference without and with. And uh, if we look at those levels, uh, adjustments here, uh, I took the black level from here over to the right a bit uh, to blacken my blacks. And I took the uh, gamma slider to the left to lighten these stones. So if I uh, keep track of its uh, at 2 here, if I bring it back to 1, it's pretty dark. But as I take that to the left, it lightens those mid-tones. And then from there, I can stamp that layer. And from here, we would uh, then go to Topaz Studio 2. So filter, Topaz Studio 2, and I'm going to add a look. This look is called Medium Sketch. Now, Medium Sketch was in Topaz Studio Classic a while back, and I had to kind of recreate it, and then I, I might have tweaked it just a bit. And this one I, I call medium sketch, JFJ, high, thick, whatever. And uh, in this one, I'm looking for a degree of detail uh, that's not real sketchy, uh, not real solid in terms of covering every square pixel, uh, but to give me pretty good detail of the com composition of the walls, not just the outline. As a reminder, I do uh, pause the recording while uh, Studio is thinking. Uh, here is the result of 
that without any adjustments. Uh, but as you can see, Medium Sketch is comprised of several different filters, the first of which is a basic filter. And if we open that, it shows the exposure is pretty neutral, the clarity's up, the shadow is pulled up a bit, uh, and the highlights there, the black level, uh, can help to darken those blacks. So I adjusted that downward a little more. Uh, and uh, you could pull the highlights down if you want more detail in the floor, for example. And um, decide if you want the exposure a little less. The impression uses this uh, thing that looks like two hairs hanging down. It's the Type 14 brush that is really the sketch brush but with a pretty high brush size uh, here's where my paint volume is for that and large volume paint opacity this way you guys can copy all these settings so type 14 brush and this is with a high number of brush strokes because we're going for a lot of detail you can copy those settings just pause the recording copy them and the rest of the settings here. Now if I really want this to look uh, like a sketch, maybe I'll take the coverage down and the coverage transition down a bit uh, so that I'm not going all the way to the edges. The painting progress is right now at one because I do want a high degree of detail. I don't think I have anything adjusted under color for this one. Lighting uh, can be adjusted here, uh, so these are a little bit redundant, uh, as is perhaps this, but uh, it gives me a lot of opportunities to adjust. Uh, so the shadows were brought up to lighten these columns, perhaps, and the contrast can be adjusted to emphasize these supports. And then we get into texture, and under texture, what I'd like to do is darken the background just a little bit because that'll help my paper texture pop a little more just to give us and then I'm going to type paper and I happen to have some papers in here you may have them too I don't know paper type 2 and then we have to make sure we have the t strength of the texture turned on and you can see that paper texture. It all helps to sell it. Uh, all right. So that's one iteration of this. Now let's see. There's a little the saturation doesn't matter because we converted to black and white. These are essentially neutral. Basic adjustment. I took the exposure down uh, when I created recreated this sketch. Uh, it might have been that way elsewhere. You can see what it looks like uh, with the exposure neutralized and that might be fine if you're looking for a light pencil sketch but I wanted a bit darker. So somewhere in there looks great. And clarity is a different level of contrast and uh, the black level is currently set to 0.2 here is a little deeper, and the white level I'm going to leave alone. One thing else that I might have put in here, uh, you'll see perhaps later, is if I want a color cast to this, I could put a color overlay, and I have one that I call gray-brown that just gives a little, and it's on overlay mode, and it just gives a little different color to the pencil instead of looking like a black ink pen it looks more like a graphite so that's one way of doing this sketch but what if we want to have a lighter sketch uh, really sketchy sketch like this uh, so turn that off and we'll go back in to Topaz Studio 2. And I'm going to look for one called Rough Sketch uh, that I have 
modified a bit, but you hopefully have rough sketch. If not, you'll be able to copy my settings here. So we're starting with that same uh, Photoshop adjusted black and white image from the original color. And uh, this is what I end up with. So let's look at the individual components. Uh, it starts with edges. And under edges, I have taken these settings. Welcome to copy. And that just helps to simplify. You can see I have a suppress weak edges turned way up, suppress small edges up, because now I'm not looking for fine detail like in the rocks that comprise the wall. I'm looking more for just the general shape of things here. Very rough sketch. Uh, and then with curves, I've taken the white level to the left a little bit by dragging this dot that is usually over here off about halfway or so to the left on this first box. So maybe 75% or so. And uh, the black just slightly to the right. And then I raised the mid-tones a little bit so you can see that all these mid-tones, especially in the lighter regions, are getting lighter and lighter. And so they'll appear lighter in the impression. Then come, came the sharpen, uh, <clears throat> and that's a mild uh, one here with a high radius to emphasize just the more gross structures. Under impression, we're again using the type 14 brush, but now it's set to a low number of strokes instead of high. And here are the brush settings, a very large brush. Again, I'm looking for coarse detail. Uh, the paint volume is relatively low set. The opacity of moderate. You can see the other settings here. I lowered the stroke width and length. I did add, a, uh, I took the spill from zero uh, and took it down to 0.77. And here I'm, I did uh, make the coverage less. And the painting progress is lowered. You normally you will see this all the way to the right. So this just uh, simplifies the drawing even more. Color, of course, not affected. Lighting, I increase the contrast, decrease the highlights to get a little detail in the floor because there was none before I reset that. And brought up the shadows so that these columns were not as dark. Without um, bringing up the shadows over here, uh, there was a great deal of imbalance. As a matter of fact, I, I darkened the wall uh, in preparation for this. I darkened the wall on the right a bit to try to balance things out here. And then down under texture, uh, the same paper texture, and ended up with a significantly different looking sketch. You can see the rougher sketch on the right versus you can see the more detailed sketch on the left versus the rougher sketch on the right. There are just so many varieties, uh, variations on it, on this one picture you can do. And uh, we've done kind of a coarse and a medium. I'll uh, show you a light in a sec and then uh, there's just kind of a very fine look that I achieve with a modification of Da Vinci, which hopefully you have Da Vinci, but I'll show you what I've got. Uh, let's go to Studio 2. I already invoked this so that you don't have to wait for me to fiddle with, with everything, uh, but you can see how much finer this drawing is, uh, much more uh, in the way of detail. And indeed, this has also helped uh, because the background is a darker gray, and so you can paint not only with dark colors, but also with white colors to kind of this chalk and pencil kind of thing. And um, throw some of my texture on here. 
and uh, get a little better look. I might go into lighting on this one and bring down, see what happens if I bring down the highlights a little bit to get a little more detail in this wall and floor. And I would probably call that finished and not muck around with anything else on this. So in case you don't have uh, a look similar to this already, let's dive in and see what we have. Uh, if we go to the bottom of the list, this is the image coming in from Photoshop. Uh, the first thing is to uh, put a black and white filter in it and adjust it how you wish. Here I, again I have the yellows and oranges turned up a little bit. Um, and then go into the impression. And this is uh, the one that counts for the most part for this, and it is Type 8 brush. A high number of strokes to get that nice fine detail. A brush size, I'm going to let you just freeze your screen and copy all these. And then freeze your screen again to copy these. And then under lighting, these are going to change perhaps from image to image. And don't forget how you prep the image may affect its outcome as well. And then for texture, I have paper two with this strength. And then the background is solid and sort of a medium gray, like a 50% gray. So now you have all the settings. You should be able to recreate that impression look. You know, to add black and white. So the uh, impression, of course, just by itself here is a filter. Each one of these steps is a filter, starting with converting to black and white and going to impression. And let's see if there's anything under black and white adjustment, which is the next filter you would add. So to create your look, just add one filter at a time, starting with black and white. Then add the impression as we went through. Then add this uh, basic adjustment. And, you know, I do see a little orange tint in here. You can see if you want to get rid of that. Yeah, there it goes away. Um, so somehow some color was sneaking through, probably because of a coverage issue. And here uh, a touch of blur was added. And, and then precision contrast equalization is at medium. And then radiance. Uh, so let's turn that off and on for a second. That's off. And you see by turning uh, that off, we actually end up with a sketchier sort of look. But with it on, we get this as if uh, it's been rubbed a little or you're using a much softer pencil. Uh, so, you know, when with sketching, usually you have at least uh, four or five different s softness, hardness pencils. And the softer they are, they the more they tend to smudge a little bit on your paper, or a lot. Uh, and uh, so that radiance does help uh, sell it as uh, someone who's using uh, multiple softnesses of pencil or hardnesses. Um, turning it off again gives a very detailed sketch. So do things to your taste, turn on and off. Uh, things that uh, are not necessarily making it look the way you want. Turn them back on if you want them back. That's simple. Um, of course, the other thing is if you want a color sketch, you can uh, make sure that in each of the places your your color is not turned off like here, it's turned off. And uh, you just keep going through. And then you can bring back the color of your original image. Uh, let's try one I haven't touched yet. So I'm going to just 
duplicate my background layer here. Control J or Command J. And uh, we'll go into Topaz Studio 2. And one of the first things I want to do is um, perhaps eliminate the background. And either way, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to try it with uh, Mask AI. Probably it would have would be good to take this back into Photoshop and expand this background a little bit, the, the canvas size. So let's do that. Uh, image, canvas size. So I've prepped my statue, given a little more headroom with a white background, and uh, now we can go into an impression. We can try a look and maybe say quick sketch or something like that. And uh, this is <laughs> one that I created and it doesn't look like much right now. <laughs> I understand that. But uh, let's go in and apply it and see if we can improve on it a little bit. So uh, let's just skip me struggling through how I wanted to set this and just show you what I have. Uh, in order to prep the image for the sketch, I first added a curves layer. So let's turn off the sketch, let's turn off precision contrast, and let's turn off the curves. So this is the image after I erased the background and replaced it with white. And then I applied this curve to lighten up the midtones mostly a bit. So let's look at that curve. Here's the midtones pushed up more definition. Um, then I added precision contrast. And the, again, the p purpose of precision contrast is to differentiate these areas of subtle uh, contrast change to allow us to bring out some more definition. So if we uh, show you what I did in precision contrast off, and on. And hopefully you can see how that's going to help us define this better with a sketch. And then in the quick sketch settings of impression, and you can copy all these by just freezing your screen, you know, pause the video, see that it's a type 14 brush with a high number of strokes and just pause your video in a second right now and copy all these settings. Now that you've restarted your video, you get to pause it again. If you want more detail, just turn up the painting progress and you get a much smoother uh, realistic sketch. And uh, nothing's been changed down here yet, but you can certainly add in your paper texture and uh, turn up the strength of that. Give it a solid background. Again, I, I uh, increase the darkness of that a little bit so that my texture shows better. And if we zoom in on this, uh, I'm seeing on my screen what I want. Let me put to 200% or so and move this over. And hopefully you can see there's this lumpiness to the paper, this uh, almost crepe-like appearance to it. I think it might be called crepe paper. Uh, and so, and this is a bolder, rougher version of that same statue sketched here. I have applied the same effect, the quick sketch one, uh, with a little higher definition to a different image, just to show you that it works. And here's a little showcase of several different sketches I have done over the last few years using Topaz Studio Impressions with a variety of techniques. 
Uh, I like to apply these, as I said before, largely to architecture, architectural detail, and uh, usually find these during my travels. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this sketching session. It's probably my favorite. I look forward to see what the rest of you do with your newfound knowledge or improved skill set. So please go ahead and post on Facebook or message me uh, with some of your images or questions. Again, like, dislike, or comment. It helps me improve. On to the next clip.